So I realize that I'm about a year late to say this, but, uh, Mass Effect Andromeda sucked. In trying to follow up one of the most beloved video game universes of all time, it failed. In fact, it failed so hard that the studio that made it doesn't exist anymore. And the game's a year old! It's not the kind of failure like a game like Clive Barker's Jericho is, where it's just bad, though. Mass Effect Andromeda's a fine game on the face of it, but in the shadow of its older brothers, the original Mass Effect trilogy, it's just kind of trash by comparison. It's like a semester where you get three straight A's, and then a C. A C on its own isn't bad, I mean, you passed, you can get into the next course, but it feels extra disappointing because it's there, next to those three A's. But despite that, there is something actually really good about Mass Effect Andromeda, something that I will argue to the ends of the Earth is actually really interesting and fun. And that is the shooter mechanics. It takes the foundations of what other paragons of the series like Mass Effect 2 and 3 created and improves upon it in interesting ways. The jump pack is actually kind of fun to use. I actually enjoyed the whole profile system. There's a lot of variety to combat when you can just kind of change your class on the fly. It's interesting. There's, there's a good bit to it. But does that in any way make Mass Effect Andromeda a good game? Uh, no. Everything the combat feeds into and is fed from is mediocre at best and ugh, at worst. So that raises an interesting question. Because despite the fact that Mass Effect Andromeda did manage to really nail its shooter mechanics, it's still a bad game. Because everything around those shooter mechanics, despite the fact that those shooter mechanics are largely what you spend a majority of your time doing, is pretty shit. So why am I bringing this up now when I'm not actually talking about Mass Effect Andromeda in this video? I'm talking about another game that came out much more recently. Probably no reason. Don't Nod Entertainment was founded in 2008, and it only took them five years to put out their first real game, Remember Me, a third-person action game set in a cyberpunk universe that I never actually played, but, I mean, its trailers always look really good. But the game that I actually played was the game they released next. I'm pretty sure we all know what game I'm talking about here. It was kind of a darling in the years that it was coming out. Life is Strange was another of Don't Nod's endeavors, and it was very different. It was about hipsters in Oregon, and photography, and a murder mystery, and it was episodic. It happened over multiple episodes, and it was published by Square. And now they've got another game out. It's called Vampire. Vampire. You can say Vampire. Of course it is. What's with the fucking spelling? Like Don't Nod's first title, Remember Me, Vampire is an action RPG. It's set in 1918 London, and you play as Dr. Jonathan Reed. Upon returning home from World War I, Jonathan Reed unexpectedly finds himself in a mass grave, having mysteriously been turned into a vampire. From there, the story follows two main threads. First of all, finding out who turned you into a vampire, and second, trying to solve the mystery around the disease that's slowly eating away at London. And it all takes place in a small slice of London's maze-like streets, filled with NPCs, quests, vampire hunters, crazy zombie monsters, and eldritch horrors for you to enjoy. But despite the interesting setting, this game is just kind of... eh. Despite the interesting setting and plot setup, it doesn't really do anything terribly unique with it. There's nothing that stands out in this game. The story is pretty one-note and uninteresting. It seems to resolve in a way that's completely arbitrary and boring. The combat's not that interesting. Nothing about this game is terribly exciting or unique. It feels like just another action RPG. A well-built one. A one that takes place in an interesting time and in an interesting setting. But other than that, there's nothing here. All right, show's over. Like and subscribe and all that shit. Well, actually, that's not entirely true. There is one thing here that's not just good, but brilliant. And I'm gonna talk about it right now. So let's dive into something I like to call the Vampire Simulation. So in Vampire, your character has a level, which is increased by spending experience points on various skills. 
These experience points are earned throughout the game. You get them from killing enemies, completing side quests, or main quests. Well, there's also like one other way, but I'm not gonna spoil that yet. But enemies in the game also have a level, and the differential between the player's level and the enemy's level determines how easy or hard it is for them to kill you or for you to kill them. A higher level enemy takes less damage from your attacks and absolutely wallops your health bar, while a lower level enemy can almost be ignored with how little it manages to harm you. At select spots in the story, all of the enemies in the game get a big jump in levels. So as you're playing through the main plot, progressing through each chapter, the enemies are getting stronger, and ideally you should be too to match them. But therein lies the interesting problem that Vampyr proposes. You see, if you're playing the game normally, completing quests and side quests and killing enemies, you're not going to be keeping up with those enemies. Those enemies are going to be leveling faster than you can. You just don't get enough experience points in those standard methods. And that's where that fourth method I mentioned comes into play. You see, Vampire's world is populated by all sorts of innocent NPCs, all of which are extremely well fleshed out. They've all got backstories and interesting things about them that you can learn, either through talking to them, talking to their friends, or finding notes, spying on them, all these different interesting ways. Not only that, but these NPCs have relationships within their communities. But over and above all of that, they do have one other thing about them that makes them interesting. They have an experience points value. And those values are generally extremely high. Thousands upon thousands of experience points. To give you a little bit of contrast, killing a regular basic enemy usually yields about 5 experience, and upgrading an ability usually costs well into the thousands. So Vampyr has presented you with a moral quandary. Do you eat these people in order to increase your experience gain, and therefore level past the enemies, and make the game easier, or do you abstain, do the right thing, not eat these people, but have a much harder time fighting the game's enemies and bosses. This is an interesting moral lever that determines how hard the game is going to be based on how hard you want to work towards being a good person, towards not feeding on people, not murdering largely innocent, but not entirely innocent people, people with stories, backstories that you have to learn in order to maximize your experience points gained from them. It's the kind of moral choice we don't really see that often in games these days. The kind that directly, tangibly, affects your experience with the game. Because just how many deaths would it take you to turn down the difficulty slider in a normal game? Well, don't worry. You can turn down that difficulty slider in Vampire. All you gotta do is look that nice, innocent nurse in the eye and get yourself a free 3,000 experience points. This system manages to accomplish two things. First, and most importantly, it not only turns your morality into a gameplay mechanic, but it tests that morality in a real, tangible way. The game is going to be considerably harder if you decide not to kill anybody. And I did! On my second run through of the game, I killed no innocents and got the good ending. But by the end of it, it was torture. But more interesting than that is number two the second thing this game accomplishes. Because in that second playthrough, the hardest thing wasn't necessarily fighting the monsters. It was sticking to my guns. There were a lot of innocent people worth a lot of experience points, and I felt tempted. Tempted to break that playthrough and decide, you know what, I could probably kill less people, and I would still be fine. It was hard, but... In that moment, I realized that the game was doing something that no other game I'd played ever did. It directly communicated the feeling of being a vampire, not to the character, but to me, the player. You see, vampires in lore, in history, they're drawn to blood. It's the ultimate temptation, and they must feed to be alive, to be strong. They must continue to suck blood. And that's a terrible thing, because you're stealing the life from an innocent, sentient being. You're taking away someone's future so that you can have more of one, so that you can eat. And that temptation is overwhelming. Well, I felt temptation. Every time I walked by somebody who I knew was worth a lot of experience points, 
Every time, my mesmerization level went up and I knew there was a whole list of new targets that I could chow down on. I felt temptation. The desire to eat these innocent people so that I could unlock the skills that would make the game considerably easier. That would make it so Chapter 6 wasn't just a boring slog through city streets filled with death and torment. I wanted to let the dark side go. And it took most of my willpower to not do that. And that right there is Vampire's greatest strength. That right there is the entire point of the Vampire Simulation, to transmit those feelings of temptation and hunger to the player. Not for blood, but for experience, for power. And in the end, blood is providing power to the main character, and those experience are providing power to the player. That temptation is the brilliant heart of Vampire. It's unfortunate that the rest of the game lets all of that down. Vampire is a flash of brilliance surrounded by a mire of mediocre ideas. This tentpole feature, this vampire simulation, is surrounded and held up by a combat system that's not interesting, by a narrative that's not gripping, and by a world that at its best is moody, and at its worst is just maze-like and confusing. Some games it's possible to ignore the bad ideas and just focus on the good. There's a lot of games like that, in fact. But you really have to judge it case by case. Vampire's tentpole system is brilliant, but it's limited by the rest of the game. The ability to hypnotize somebody to devour them in an alley is constrained by your mesmerized level, and NPCs have a certain resistance to mesmerization, which prevents them from being taken out of the story too early or giving you too many experience points too early in the game. The vampire simulation had to be hamstrung in order to maintain the rest of the game. There are other games where that doesn't happen, but unfortunately, it happened here. I made an unfortunate implied comparison to Mass Effect Andromeda at the start of this video, and yeah, it was kind of mean of me. Mass Effect Andromeda's got a lot of hate behind it, but I honestly think that a lot of that hate is bound up in how good the original three Mass Effects were. If you take Mass Effect Andromeda out of that context and you put it out alone, I get the same feeling from that game that I get from Vampire. It feels like it's got a really good heart, a core that is fun and interesting, but everything else about the game lets that core down. And vampire is no different. The Vampire Simulation is a brilliant idea, but the rest of the game constrains it. If there's ever a sequel to Vampire, I really hope they let the system breathe. They let it grow and be more interesting. They let it inform the game instead of the game informing the Vampire Simulation. Because that would be a game that would be magnificent. A game focused more around who you kill and why, or how, than a game focused around mediocrity. But what the fuck do I know? I still think Wildstar is brilliant. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I do really love making these videos still. If you enjoyed it, I would also appreciate it if you hit that like button. Nobody knows how fucking YouTube works anymore, but apparently that might help. Uh, if you enjoy this content and you're new here, please feel free to subscribe, and I would love to hear from you about what you think of Vampire. Down in the comments down below this video, or if you'd like to join the discussion more real time, hop into our Discord, there's an invite link in the description. Other than that, there is a companion video to this coming out next week, in which me and a couple of other people who played this game sit down and talk about it. Check that one out if you want to hear more in-depth reasons as to why I think this game is pretty mediocre. But other than that, thank you very much for watching. Again, I appreciate you, you are wonderful people, and now go out into the world and have yourselves a great one.